coming up. They can make dreams come true, and they're portable. Also, this facility can and will hold you spellbound. This and more coming up on Perspectives. Hello, everybody. I've been sort of watching Tulsa deal with what to city officials is a different sort of problem than what they're used to. It has to do with a group skating along the walkway on Riverside Drive. Now, I feel it necessary to keep you abreast of the situation just in case you miss the hullabaloo surrounding the event many were exposed to. While it's okay to skate on the paved path, it appears the group felt it necessary to skate bare to the waist men and women. It was labeled by the group involved as the topless trail skate, and it took place on Sunday the 29th of last month. A spokesman for the group said it was in support of the National Free the Nipple movement. The same spokesman said she got the idea after seeing the news from Fort Collins, Colorado, where the city reportedly repealed its ban on topless women after a very costly battle in the 10th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in which the court stated the ordinance likely is unconstitutional. That was in its ruling against the city. Well, sir, at first, the city of Tulsa said it would adhere to the court's ruling, clearing the way for women to be topless in public. But then the state attorney general stepped in, saying, in effect, the act of women going topless in public is against state law. The Tenth Circuit Court has jurisdiction over federal cases in six states, including... Oklahoma, but our Attorney General Mike Hunter pointed out the case involving the city of Fort Collins, Colorado was a city case. It doesn't change our state law. And that the court's ruling on the Fort Collins ban did not decide the constitutionality of Oklahoma's state law. So the city of Tulsa changed its mind and said it would enforce the current law, meaning it's illegal for women to go topless in public in Oklahoma. And it's probably all for the best. Had the city not made the change, who knows what would have happened? Why, next thing you know, women would probably want to vote or be paid the same as a man, doing the same job, or drive a car, or, Lord help us, run for office. Well, can you imagine? Why, it's even possible the state could pass a law that would make it illegal to leave the lid up. Well, sir, I've started to wonder why they passed the topless law in the first place. Did some woman go topless years ago in Oklahoma, which we all know was once a hoot and a holler place? And if she did, why is there no marker along the side of the road that says, on this spot before the Civil War, Mary Brown became the first woman to remove her top, which spooked the horses and caused an uproar. And we all know that uproars are forbidden in Oklahoma. Was that what prompted the legislature to sing their own little arrangement of that song from The Music Man? Would it have gone maybe something like this? We got trouble, trouble, trouble right here in River City with a capital T, and that rhymes with B, and that stands for breast. We'll never know. But it's a question about state history that deserves an answer. I guess it's just another unanswered Oklahoma history question laid bare to speculation. I'm Sam Jones, and that is my perspective. Coming up, dream it and build it. Now it can happen in your own backyard. That's up next on Perspectives. <laughs> 